Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 3. Yeah. All right. You'll like this sermon a little bit better than some of my first ones that we had there. I can tell by that shout. Ephesians chapter 3. All right. This has been a, one of the key verses that we have here. And uh, verse, verse uh, 20 again. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to. So when you see that according to, now you're going to measure to something, right? You're going to measure to something. According to the power that works in us. So you've got to understand the power that works in you. You have If you are born again, you have the power of God in your life that can operate. And the more wisdom and the more more knowledge you have, the better off you are using it. I've been doing a lot of study last few days, getting ready to do some more recording in our our, uh, Covenant Global Evangelism School of World Missions. Uh, We haven't talked a whole lot about it, but trying to make a product available to help people to prepare for missions and ministry and and so uh scott and i will be back studio this week getting that done and i have i spent even though i wasn't in here for friday i spent time friday even at home just with the computer and and uh, things and just working on it and uh so when i was looking at this uh just looking at the power uh that's that's in us uh a lot of people can have understanding and have theological understanding, and they can understand that God's real and God's powerful. But that doesn't mean they had the revelation how this power works in them. You have to understand that there is a Christ in you. There's a power in you that goes beyond anything else, that supersedes anything else, but it's according to the power that works in you. So when you're born again, you have God's power resident in you. Now, so when I was studying, going back to this phrase, I have a Bible program that's very good for Apple computers, Mac, Mac, Mac computers. It's called Accordance. It's one of the best things I've, I learned from it years ago. It was one of the only ones, and they really, it's a true biblical suite uh, for that computer. Most Bible programs are built for Windows-based computers. And, uh, and I'm sitting there thinking, there's so much more. Uh, they got a big tutorial there. And I'm thinking, I'm using this program more and more to do these studies, uh, to pick up different things instead of having, used to, used to have like five or six, seven books laying out in front of you. Now you just toggle back and forth. There's so much more to this program. And I said, when I get through with this outline, I'm going to go back and watch some tutorials because there's things in here that can, that can help me and save time in doing this program, but I've got to know what it is. And when I said that, I'm thinking, it, it's just the way the Bible is. There's so much more in the Word of God that can help people's lives. You just got to get into it and find out where it's at and have a little bit of tutorial. That's called discipleship classes. That's called morning worship tutorials. That's called study because you got to understand the power that works in you. Well, I have a Bible. Do you read it? I have a Bible. Have you studied it? Because reading is not studying. Reading is reading. Studying is different. A lot of people read the word. They don't study the word. You read it. But you got to read it. You got to read it. You got to study it. You got to make these things. You got you to bring these things about there so this is what you got to do so there's a power that works in us and so we read last week about jeremiah god has things in store for us but we've got to prepare ourselves to receive these things that are in store for us amen we got to we got to get ready for this and uh go from there so let's go back let's go to the book of james because i want to get into more of what we're talking about this subject of more uh when I'm looking at more, we're looking at more of God to us and different things. But there's got to be more of us and dedication to that. Uh, this morning, the Lord dealt with me even further. As we talk about the year of more of God, the thing just says God, a God of more than enough. We understand that. 
But a lot of people are just waiting on God to do things that God's waiting on you to do something. Come on. You can have a vehicle, brand new, but you've got to know how to get in and drive it. So it's not just so much what God does for us. You take the lepers, even the days of Jesus, 10 lepers that came to him. Jesus said, now go show yourself to the priest. How many know they had to go do something? It wasn't just what he did. They had to do something. And so we have to understand there is a responsibility on our side. And this is the verse that I want to get to here in verse 6 of chapter 4 of the book of James. Verse 6 of chapter 4. But he, God, gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. But he says that, he said the first part of that, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud and gives grace, or even more, there, it was referenced more, grace to the humble. So this word grace is not just a, a, just a spiritual phrase or a term or a word that we use. It has words of empowerment to it. It deals with anointings. It deals with heaven's help. It deals with so many things. It, when you're under the grace of God, it's just something supernatural going on in your whole surroundings. But it says, God give us more grace, but then he gives you your responsibility. Therefore, he says, he resists the proud. So I got to guard my heart. I got to see where I'm at. And he gives grace to the humble. Now, to be humble means that I'm going to become pliable in the hands of God. I'm going to put myself in a place where God can use me. And I, word humil- I understand humility is a part that's, that's a different concept. You know, just because somebody is quiet doesn't mean they're humble. Just because somebody has gray hair doesn't mean they're full of wisdom. What about us who don't have any hair? Huh. I mean, does that mean I have no access to wisdom? So hair color doesn't mean wisdom. It means aged people, and you understand things because you've been through things. Amen? Just like the, just like the commercial. Uh, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. And so just by the color of your hair, you've lived long enough to understand there's challenges that I've been through that I've either gained victory or defeat and learned from that that we can help people. And so... So, so God wants to empower us and so, and through humility, but just because someone's quiet doesn't mean they're humble. And just because someone says, well, we're just trying to be humble. Well, most likely if you're trying to be, you're not. I learned that a long time ago. Humility is something that's seen up on you and be clothed with humility. Clothing is something you see. It's something you see. It's like, Someone said today, I like that tie. Well, ties are meant to be seen. And so I don't have to tell people, I'm wearing a tie today. Did anybody notice that? No, it's noticeable. And the older I get, the more I like the ties to pop. (laughs) Amen? Taking away other features that are wrinkling up. The tie (laughs) kind of draws attention. (laughs) So you want it to pop a little bit. But anyway, uh, humility is something that's recognized. It's something recognized. Uh, We we don't have to go around saying uh, we have the power. The power ought to be recognizable. I have have the love of God. It ought to be recognizable. It ought to be something that is seen because it's on display. Well, I'm, I'm... I'm a giver too. It ought to be seen. It ought to be on display. So things that we say are just become words. What we do is what's noticeable. Actions are louder than words. People can say whatever they want to say, but can they perform what they really believe? It's what you believe. It's not always what you say. It's what you believe. And so... 
He says here, he, he resists the proud and gives grace. I like to say more grace to the humble. Therefore, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. Now, this is, this is based upon you. you getting this. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God. And God will draw near to you. See, I I just want God to show up more in my life. Draw near to God. And God will draw near to you. See, God doesn't have to decide, well, do I want to or not? It's a supernatural thing. Out of all the people in the world, over 7 billion people, out of all the people in the world, there's almost like since God's omnipresent, he's all-powerful, as soon as I draw near to God, God gravitates to me automatically. It's not like, well, let me see if he'll make three steps. The closer my heart draws near to him, he draws near to me. It's not like, all right, I've made it all the way here, now it's your turn. No, every step I get close, it gets closer. Every step I take, he's closer. Amen? Because God never changes. God's not, God never leaves us nor forsakes us. But he gives more grace to the humble. He gives more grace, more grace. And so I believe that there's going to be more graces upon us than we've ever experienced in our life. More graces. That means that we're going to be able to make it through things that we have tripped over in the past. See, there's a difference between grace and mercy. Mercy is what Jesus did to keep us all out of hell because we deserved it. Mercy is when you messed up. Everybody knows you messed up. Even you know you mess up. And we know there's a penalty for messing up. And the one who deserves to execute the penalty says, my love is great. I set you free. And there's no penalty. It's like the man who is in debt to his, to his natural lord, his, the landowner, and he had no way to pay it, no way at all. The parable states, no matter what he did, he could have never paid his debt off. And he came and begged for forgiveness. The master didn't have grace on him. The master had mercy. Mercy, because he was going to put him in prison. As soon as he was forgiven a debt beyond anything he could have ever paid, he went and found someone who owed him an amount that was capable of being paid. That's what the parable is about. That's capable of being paid. It said, pay me. I don't have it. Took him by the throat and put him in jail. When the master that was merciful heard about what Brother Stupid did, (laughs) called him to the place, The word on the street is, I forgave you of something you could have never forgive. See, it's biblical. We owed a debt we couldn't pay. He paid our debt that he did not owe. Jesus didn't owe that debt. And yet I forgave you of something you couldn't. And you turned around and went and grabbed someone else by the neck that had the capabilities if you'd have had mercy on him. And it said from that very minute, he executed that debt back on him again. And he said he turned him over to the tormentors see I tell people unforgiveness will get you to the tormentors so you've got to be able to forgive that's why I like one of those things there if people forgive and walk with God you can stay out of the realm of torment when I see people always tormented the first thing I start delving into a little bit where, where have you got to the place to where you got hurt or something was said and, you, and, and, and you're not forgiven. Because it's almost like unforgiveness brings you before the tormentors. And I don't know about you, but I don't like being tormented with anything. Nothing. It's not God's will to be tormented. So mercy is when you are granted something that you don't deserve. Come on. I introduced a paddle to Josh one day. It had a cutout like a heart. It was a big, thick thing. I didn't really mean, I didn't really, it was playing, actually. He was joking. I said, uh, 
bent over or something. And I took at it and hit him. And I guess I hit him too hard. And I mean, he was. <laughs> and so I found out he don't like this. He didn't like that at all. So one day, I was ready to execute judgment. <laughs> and I got the paddle. He became an extreme negotiator. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> the boy can dance. <laughs> this is going to cost me. <laughs> But he became a negotiator. And uh, it's amazing. <laughs> Sorry, son. I mean, it's just part. You were just born into the family. That's just all it is. <laughs> but the whole deal was, have mercy on me. I made it right in my heart. <laughs> So you execute mercy. And then about a day later, you say, I should have used judgment. I had a lack of judgment by executing mercy. <laughs> but mercy is when somebody, you deserve it, and the person deserves to give it to you, says, I love you. You don't get it. Now, that doesn't mean because God wants to spoil, create a bunch of spoiled children. But it wasn't for mercy, you and I wouldn't be here. Because we've all done enough. To eliminate ourselves from the blessing. But thank God for mercy. But grace isn't mercy. Grace, when the grace of God's upon you, somebody can put their foot out and try to trip you, and you just go right over it. (laughs) Calm, suave. And it's like you could walk with your eyes closed and still not get it because you're graced. That's like when somebody trips... When somebody trips around, we become sarcastic and say, hey, Grace, because we know that wasn't very graceful. So the point is, when grace is up on you, there's something up on you that can't beat you. And he giveth more grace. Come on. More grace. I want to, there's going to be more grace made available. Not grace to live sloppy, but grace to live blessed. Come on. Grace to live blessed. He's going to give more grace, more grace to the humble. So what you do this year, you decide, I'm going to live a life of forgiveness. I'm going to live a life of honor. I'm I'm going to live a life of mercy. See, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. There's something about being merciful. That doesn't mean that you don't have a backbone, you don't stand for something. But blessed are the merciful. But I see the grace of God upon the church. A supernatural window. That doesn't mean that, well, God's grace upon me, I got, I can just let down my guard. No, 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 no. There's no letting down a guard. This year, you better keep the guard guarded. Amen. So it's not letting down a guard. So I see more of God coming to us, but also more of us to God. But there's also a side of the more that we'll get into. There's going to be more disappointments in some people's lives. Which is going to give them more opportunities to blame everybody else more except for their self. We may see more betrayals. We may see more people fall slack. But at the same time, we're going to see more of God changing, fixing, and rearranging like we've never seen before. See, sometimes we look at it and say, well, you know, this is the more... uh, everything, the numbers increase and all that. And I really believe it's God's will for it to happen because I believe God has people out there hungry enough for that. 
But the same token, the devil's still the devil. The enemy's still the enemy. He's still the enemy of your, of your soul. And he's still the enemy of other people's soul. And if people don't draw nigh to God, you're going to see more people grow cold. So this more is more. And I'm not going to put my head in, in, the, in the proverbial sand and say it's all about more of God. Give me, 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 praise you. No. There's going to be more of us to him, but there's going to be more people that will get caught up and not seeing it as important. And there'll be more people will become deceived and go their own way. Why, why do we fortify ourselves? So that we can stay more on the blessing, the God side, the grace side. And not fighting that. Because the enemy's going to prey on the weak. It's that way in the animal kingdom. It's that way in the natural world. And that's that way in the spiritual world. The enemy's going to prey on the weak. He'll prey on those who are by themselves. He will prey on those who are by themselves. I love watching the animal kingdom Movies. The lions are always out to attack. And you'll begin to see, especially the Cape Buffalo, they'll start protecting them. They'll come in, and literally, this one thing I saw, they took that head, head horn and literally threw that lion, and it just went flipping. And about three of them got around one of their own and refused to allow that lion to come in and get them. See, this is what we got to have more of. We got to have more of this family thing. That you're, you're my family. Not because you did something for me or you did something against me. We're family. We got more unity. For all of this to work more in our life. God's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Now according to the power that works in you. So now we've got to find out what's capable of short-circuiting the power what have we allowed in the past to put a kink in our spiritual hose instead of allowing the free flow and that's all we got to make sure we get no more kinks in our spiritual hose we don't have anything else short-circuiting our power because we need everything that god has for us to live in victory and to be everything he wants us to be in 2023 and beyond amen 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 do you believe that do you believe that so he gives more so what you have to do, draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. That's the Bible. So God will always do his part. We have our part to play. Amen. God will always do his part. We have our part to play. So I, I admonish you. Don't yield to the world. Don't yield to, yield to pressures. Don't stay out of. I, don't, I just I, I, I got it. I didn't try to just be mouthy a while ago, but stay out of online spats. Quit getting offended on the behalf of someone else. Come on. Just because somebody said something about somebody that you know and you like doesn't mean you have to take offense on their part because the enemy will use that to open a door in your life to mess with you. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I know it's hard to stay out of. Don't do it. Guard your heart with all diligence. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life the forces of life amen guard your heart guard your heart and let this year be something like you've never seen in your life amen hallelujah all right let's stand together glory to god